Let's um, uh, talk about sort of the newest drug that's uh, soon to come to a theater near us, and, and that's TAS-102. Already approved in Japan, um, being used there, compassionate extended access use in the United States. So I have a few patients I've given the drug to now. I haven't participated in any clinical trials. Um, uh, everybody got a little experience with the drug? Uh, yeah. So what do you think? So we, we participated in the recourse trial, which was the large phase three randomized trial, and that was published in New England Journal two weeks ago. So we know the data from that now. Um, it's, it's a really fascinating story historically. The drug is an anti-metabolite. It's very similar to 5-FU, and in fact, it was invented and synthesized by the same guy who gave us 5-FU, Charlie Heidelberger at the University of Wisconsin. He gave us 5-FU, FUDR, and now uh, trifluorothymidine, or TFT, which is the main active ingredient of TAS-102. And in the TAS-102, it's combined with a metabolic inhibitor, so you can give the drug twice a day. The drug by itself has about a 12-minute half-life, mm -hmm. so it's really not very clinically practical. Um, so it's an oral drug twice a day. You give it 10 days out of every month. And the toxicity is mainly mild hematologic toxicity, delayed marrow recovery, so not everybody can get retreated on day 28, sometimes you have to wait another week. Um, and otherwise, it's pretty well tolerated, and the benefit seems to be very similar to what we've seen with, with other single agents in this kind of last line setting. The hazard ratio for survival is around 0.65, and, and it's, a, it's definitely going to be an option for patients. Yeah, I mean, my experience with it so far is probably more neutropenia than what you described, is that you know, people coming in. As a GI oncologist, we don't deal with a lot of neutropenia, at least I don't. And, and um, you know, coming in with ANCs of three and 400 on day of retreatment. Now, these are later line, refractory, eligible for the compassionate use. Um, but in that context, I would expect diarrhea, mucositis, and other things. Right. Nothing. They, they I mean, it's that. like they're taking water otherwise. Mm -hmm. So almost no systemic. The patients are happy. And in fact, many of them have said they feel better taking mm -hmm. it. So what's your all's experience so far? Uh, so I actually have been a commentator on this, but mm -hmm. I've never used the drug. Never given it out. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what I would say is that uh, the basic science data looks very encouraging in that uh, it does work in cell lines that are refractory to 5-FU. Mm -hmm. uh, and the profile in terms of toxicity seems to be more predictable and, in my mind, potentially advantageous over its main competitor, Cape Yeah. Um, I think the drug is going to have a future, and I could see it moving up into earlier lines of therapy, even adjuvant therapy in time. Yeah, so that's what, yeah, does is this drug move forward in combination? We need to figure out a new dose and schedule, probably. Yes, the the trials that are already going on with um, Arena TCAN are using a week on and a week off yeah. instead of the 10 days uh, every 28. So yeah. I, I think that that's already kind of moving in that direction. So almost identical curves and outcome to regorafenib. Right. Um, both drugs need a new dose and schedule um, to manage their toxicities. Uh, both active, no responses in either, at least in single agent. So now we've got more chess pieces in the refractory setting, and one of the big discussions is there a favorite? Would you use one first versus the other in sequencing? And I don't think I don't have enough experience, certainly, to to say if I have a bias one way or the other, but how do you think this is going to be received the, uh, out there? Uh, the safety profile of the drug looks very appealing, and I think it's going to give it an advantage when it's going to, you know, hit the market. When it hit the market, in fact. The challenge is uh, for the uh, treating physician to think, since the PFS is still like regorafenib around uh, almost two months plus, if you're going to put four patients today on this drug, at your first three staging, two of them are going to progress. Now, if your first two patients happen to be the progressors, it doesn't mean the drug is a bad drug. It's just you had two back to back. So it's important knowing going into treating the first patient. And of course, the same thing. Patients that we could, were on the studies were ECOG 0 and 1. I'm sure we're going to treat patients who are maybe ECOG 2 
or patients who have been more under this ongoing recycling, and that's what happens in community and even you know universities. We recycle patients on different lines of therapy, so they're beaten up. Although a good proportion of the patients on the study were four lines of therapy or more. And I wonder how physicians are gonna experiment with using colony stimulating factor, which were not part of the study. You could use it. I think you could use it, but you're right, it wasn't a formal part. But you yeah. probably shouldn't. Uh, but the well, question this is the is, question, right? Yeah. The question is how you're going to use it. The, the difference between a clinical trial where you have a guidelines, it's a standardized, you have research nurses to follow versus a bit you are on your own. And I'm concerned about the co you know, administration of colony stimulating factor plus, you know, the pills being taken, which is a no-no. So it's going to be interesting the first six months uh, uptake in the community, how this will be translated. And of course, that is the learning curve. The exciting, I think, more is the combination moving in earlier lines of therapy. I believe the drug still has the challenge of formulating the pills, which mm. is, as we know, is a challenge. It's not gonna be that easy. You think capecitabine was a challenge? We're, you know, we look at that as being a challenge of having the drugs act ultimately provided to the patients. Yeah, with neutropenia being the side effect, maybe we should hand the drug over to our leukemia doctor <laughs> and figure it out. It's not very no. deep neutropenia. I, I, I mean, you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't over. It was a 4% febrile neutropenia right. rate. It's so a low fever neutropenia because I don't right. think they have the other stuff, the mucositis and right, diarrhea, right. So, which increases the risk of that. So, right. yeah, very well tolerated, but I think a new dose and schedule will be in order based on uh, uh, the, the myelosuppression we saw. Um,